Whether it's high art or beautiful trash, the AV Club explores the best of film, TV, music, books, and games. Inventory is our obsessively specific pop culture list. Welcome to Inventory. Today we're going to be talking about romantic comedy characters who don't deserve love. The idea here is that sometimes romantic comedy characters get so gimmicky that they stop being people and start being ideas. Unfortunately, most of these ideas are kind of bad. One of the movies that I, I think really typified the trend to some degree started it, which is Bridget Jones' Diary. It was based on a huge bestseller. It was a hugely popular movie. And yet it's this movie about a, a bumbling hapless, clumsy, <laughs> foul-mouthed, where the fuck is the fucking tuna? Really shallow woman who doesn't really do much with her life except sit around and wait for somebody to come along and love her for herself. You have no messages. Horrible, horrible self. There's this early scene that kind of sums up everything that is wrong with Bridget Jones, where she sees Colin Firth, Mr. Darcy, at a party, and she thinks to herself, maybe this is Mr. Right. And then he turns around and he's wearing an ugly sweater, and she instantly rejects him. Maybe not. Everything she does is wrong, and yet by mid-film, she's got men fighting for her, literally fighting over her in the streets. I should have done this years ago. If she's so terrible, why was this movie such a huge hit? Well, a lot of it is about the comedy. And you're supposed to laugh at her, but then in the end you're supposed to still feel gratified when she gets a perfect man. Verbally incontinent spinster who smokes like a chimney, drinks like a fish, and dresses like her mother. Genevieve, your uh, character is actually a lot more hateful, I think. Yeah, uh, it's kind of crazy how many successful romantic comedies base their romance in deception. I'm thinking How to Lose a Guy in 10 Days, Never Been Kissed, but the one that really takes us to the extreme is Failure to Launch, starring Sarah Jessica Parker and Matthew McConaughey. Sarah Jessica Parker's character has actually made a career out of tricking men into falling in love with her. You're smart, you're attractive, you love the original Star Wars trilogy. Parents of man-children who won't move out hire her to form a relationship with their son. The bottom line is, he bonds with me. He lets go of you. He moves out. And presumably she dumps him. But the justification for her doing this is she fell in love with a man who wouldn't move out of his parents' house, so now I guess she feels the need to prevent other women from going through that she's like, trauma. She's like, she's like Batman. Oh, oh man! Oh. Who's laughing now? But that still doesn't make up for the fact that she stages the death of a dog. <laughs> oh, thanks, Gretchen. Anytime. But presumably she comes to actually care for Matthew McConaughey. Yeah, poor thing. She's found this gorgeous, perfect, frequently shirtless man, and we're supposed to feel sorry for her because, you know, she's a lying liar. Boo hoo. And Yoda says Only what you take with you. Keith, you have a dude who doesn't deserve love. Yeah, it's not that he's a terrible person necessarily, he's just kind of too dopey to deserve love. Uh, this is Josh Hartnett in the film 40 Days and 40 Nights from 2002. His heart was broken by Vanessa Shaw. You still think about it when you jerk off? So broken, in fact, that he can hardly bring himself to have sex with uh, the, the many, many women who throw themselves at him. Oh! Oh! fuck was that? He decides that for Lent, for the 40 days and 40 nights of the title, he will give up sex. You won't last a week. Oh, you're wrong, brother. Once it gets out... You guys put up a web page about me? A web page? But please, this is a complicated betting pool. Women start throwing themselves at him with an even more uh, absurd rate. Oh, fuck. The way Hartnett plays him, he kind of comes off as it's like a weird, twitchy dope. Good night. Uh. Oh. Oh, oh. Like kind of a dumb guy who loses his mind over the course of this. He becomes almost like a sexual werewolf. Uh, he, uh, he asks his friends to handcuff him to a bed. If my hand is free, I'm bound to do anything with it. Vanessa Shaw throws herself into to the mix as well, including a female-on-male rape scene toward the end of the film. <sighs> Spoiler, I guess. Relax, baby. 
I feel like Josh Hartnett has, plays a man who gives up sex. You alienate a lot of your audience right there. It's like, oh, to echo you, oh, boo-hoo, you know? I'm not ashamed! I'm embarrassed! What unites all our, all our films here is that we feel like the characters are too shallow to be interesting. Once you have somebody that's got 12 different personality ticks and no sign of a person under there, you're not really dealing with a character anymore, let alone a character that could plausibly fall in love. I almost fucked an outlook today. For more romantic comedy characters who don't deserve love, visit us at avclub.com.